Hello everyone. Once again, we gather around the scriptures, and of course, today being uh, Thursday, of co- you know, tomorrow is when the Passover actually begins, and of course, that's when we know that Jesus was betrayed. And so, I want to pick up on his betrayal. I think there's nothing worse than betrayal. Would you not agree with me? And so, um, maybe you've betrayed someone. I certainly know that perhaps all of us have fallen short of the glory of God, and all of us are are in certainly need of what it was that Jesus did for us on the cross. But this is a moment in Scripture where the most innocent man ever was betrayed. And so, I'm going to pick up the reading here in John chapter 13, and we'll start from, um, let's say, start from 21. And he says, After that he had said this, Jesus was troubled in his spirit, and he testified, and he said, I tell you the truth, one of you is going to betray me. And then his disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. And one of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, ask him, what does he mean? And leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? And Jesus said, well, it's the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it into the dish. And then he gave it to Judas Iscariot. Um, let's pick up on the next verse. It says, what you're about to do, go and do quickly. So of course, because Judas was kind of the treasurer and he was the one that always go out and buy the provisions, you know, he got up and went and they thought he was just going to go and do and fulfill a regular menial task of going down to the store to get some provisions. But in actual fact, it wasn't, you know, he was going out to purposefully betray this innocent man. And then Jesus predicts Peter's denial. So, of course, you know, we look at Judas and we think, well, he betrayed Jesus. But actually, all the disciples did. All of the disciples ran away. All of this, with the exception of John, it would seem, because John, there is account of him being at the foot of the cross with Mary, the mother of Jesus. Um, And so here, when we look at this text, we see that, you know, Peter is the one that's going to be denied. And and he's simply like pretty, you know, we know him to be this, this very deliberate individual who just kind of is not afraid to step forward and we see how his personality interacts with the crowd on the day of Pentecost but yeah we've got this and this is what Jesus said he said a new commandment I give to you love one another as I've loved you you must love one another so let me just pause for a moment there's been a lot of messages that have gone online about hope and about faith at this particular time but we need to just remind ourselves that faith hope and love the greatest of which is love this is an opportunity. Being in lockdown simply means, God, help me to discover my love treasure. Help me to discover my, my roots, my actual roots. I mean, after all, my identity is I'm a Christian, or right, my relevance is in the place of prayer. But what about this love thing? Surely if that is true for myself, then we're able to love it this time. And not everyone is having it perhaps as reasonably comfortable as maybe you're having it. And so we need to be mindful of how we can best love the people that are really finding a huge struggle at a time such as this. Um, And so it goes on and it it just continues and and Jesus is simply, you know, kind of setting them up for what it is that they're about to prepare. I love what happens afterwards. We go into the chapter 14 of John and he starts off and he says, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house and many mansions, I go to prepare a place for you. And they say, Jesus, where are you going? And then, of course, we have all of this wonderful stuff, wonderful scripture that comes about the Holy Spirit and the promise that he will be. Uh, that's an incredible, but that's for another day. Right now, we're just looking at tomorrow, opportunity for you to break bread, gather your friends, let them link in with us, uh, let them come online. We're going to be live with the video recording, and it's great when the church gets together. You know, we can pass comments as we watch the video, but I'm going to strongly suggest I've got a good message for tomorrow that's really going to stir people's hearts. Let's pray for people to come to Jesus. What a wonderful time in their lifetime, in their journey to come to know, come to faith, and come to know Jesus. God bless you guys. Let's, let's see this Easter as being different. Let's make sure we look at the Word of God, keep it in our hearts, and encouraged by this incredible moment, this great expression of love that happened on the cross for us. Bless you.